It's 16 feet square on two levels, so it's 512 square feet. Uh, it is built out of eastern white pine, so all natural materials, logs, and its components so that we can we constructed this in five days. The pine serves as the entire wall system. So the exterior finish, the structure, the insulation, and the interior finish. The two by six log would be comparable to R24. The standard, uh, it has a, a full washroom with a toilet, uh, vanity, and shower. This is, uh, is the kitchen living room space, and uh, you can see the beautiful view that you get out there on the window. It brings in a lot of natural light. I mean, we have no lights set up, and you see how nice and bright it is in here. It's actually very spacious for 16 by 16 on this floor. Uh, this couch uh, is a storage. It also pulls out into a bed. This table raises up into a little uh, eating table or working table. For as it sits right now, obviously there'll be some more interior finishes. There's not a whole lot of trim and stuff in it right now, just for sake of the show. Ever since HUD's formation in the 1960s, it's largely been focused on big apartment buildings in urban centers. Even today, the vast majority of the budget goes towards like rental subsidies and housing projects in big cities. A relatively small fraction of the budget goes to policy development and research, the stuff that I think is so important to creating more forms of housing, but increasingly, HUD is getting excited about projects like this one behind me. I'm standing on the National Mall at the Innovative Housing Showcase, where HUD is organizing all of the best innovation we've got in terms of different types of shelter and how we can provide it. You've got everything from temporary shelters that show up in emergency situations that are independent off-grid, can be spun up really fast, all the way to ADUs, townhouses, manufactured homes. They're showing everything. I'm Mike Blanford. And my role at HUD is as the Building Technology Research Program Manager. The Innovative Housing Showcase began in 2019 under the leadership of uh, Dr. Ben Carson. Since Dr. Carson came on board, we really focused on off-site construction of housing and also making housing more resilient. Manufactured housing is the greatest source of unsubsidized affordable housing in the United States. We're really grateful, I think, to have it. You know, the issue is that it's not universally accepted across the United States. And one of the reasons why we have it and we have the other factory built housing on the mall is to help affect public opinion. You know, that these houses are suitable for everyone to live in. They're acceptable in every community. Um, I think a big strategic advantage for the world that we're uh, here for uh, is being able to carry it around the backside of a building for ABU, uh, not having to boom it over top of the roof system, especially with hydro lines in the front, makes it a lot easier. So how do you keep the logs from warping and leaking and all the other problems and rotting and all the other problems that are sort of endemic to uh, log homes? Well, that comes back to my grandfather and my father. Um, we always wanted it to be as maintenance-free as possible. And so what's unique with our uh, 22 patents is its ability to have that welcome lifestyle without any adjustments or bonking or chinking or any of the stuff that you would traditionally have with log homes. Looking at this component, everybody focuses on the spring. The spring is just there to apply the tension to keep this component on the top course of logs. What happens is every time those logs shrink, this is actually locking itself into place. So I can't lift back up. It's like a one-way valve. It's only gonna go down. So it tightens over time. When the logs go, the top four courses are most prone on a log building to wanna to twist, crown, or fall and try and lift back up. This is a 2,500 pound spring. That log can easily lift back up on. This component does not allow that to happen. So in the construction phase, you'll notice the two inch preload between the spring and the shaft. That's now preset for the life of the home. As soon as that's tightened, this is found up in the attic space, buried in the insulation. That's tightened down, it's good for the life of the home. Every time those logs shrink, this spring is gonna keep this on the top of the wall. 
It's just going to continually lock it into place so that this joint remains tight from the day that you build it to the day that you pass on. And how long will one of these houses last? A life expectancy for an Eastern White Pine house is 20, or 250 plus years. Uh, there's Eastern White Pine houses in Russia that are 850 years old. So from a longevity standpoint, that's a big portion of our business is being passed on from generation to generation through trust. Um, this is a building methodology that's environmentally friendly, but also has the longevity. So the backyard is small. Yeah. And so this is two stories, so it doesn't need up your backyard, which right. is counterintuitive. Kind of the other thing is that you can't lift them over the overhead wires and trees. It is prefabricated. A lot of these neighborhoods have, because they're not rich neighborhoods, they've got overhead wires. So these are logs that two people can bring in. And two people can lift them and knot together. They're all insulated and finished. No, no further finish inside or not. The color can match their house. It's like IKEA furniture, IKEA house. IKEA. Wow. Very nice. And by the way, the, the light of that window is missing on the chapel. And the cloth is coming in the But basically, the window, the, that window also lights the curtains. Gotcha. So you know your windows. Yeah, that's nice. I like it. Very cool. Thank you. Love its dark color. That's very beautiful. Okay. And sort of the aesthetic is different from what you normally see. And then I'm going to be honest with you, it's really reminiscent of um, kind of like being a child and those timber Lincoln blocks logs. that you... Yeah, the Lincoln Logs, have. yeah. And that's sort of like, it's it's heartwarming. And I like that it's vertical. So you're increasing your livable space by moving up instead of moving out. Yes. Which is kind of cool. That could work for a family or it could be a detriment. But um, as long as you were a healthy individual and taking care of your body and making good choices for your body so you had a good health, you can. You can definitely move vertical.